Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show today. with a special guest, Michael Zuber, a one rental at a time. Welcome, Michael. Hey, thanks for having me, Rick. Man, I've had a lot of requests to bring you on. You're a popular guy, and I also appreciate you coming on because I see how many of these streams that you punch out. I don't know how you find time to do anything. <laughs> I, I'm very lucky I have uh, seven or eight millionaires that come back once a week. So it's a really it's really easy, actually. I get to talk to seven or eight friends a week, and we do three videos at a time. So it's a lot of fun. That, that is fun. You know, and I, I uh, since I've been doing this, I find that the thing I enjoy the most is when people actually reach out and want to have a conversation with you on a phone call. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, and they, it's they act like they're bothering you. And I'm like, no, no, let's talk. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So you um so you have um you focus on helping people uh purchase homes for rentals, and mm -hmm. regardless of where the market is, you have a buy box so that people know exactly what they need to look at to make sure that the math works. So you're eliminating all the emotion in the transaction and just saying. If these metrics work, go for it. If I sum that up correctly. Yeah, I think if you're a new investor, again, I've been, I've been teaching this for quite a while, but um, most new investors get excited about real estate. It could be a flipping show. It could be the money. It could be something, right? Something gets them at, you know, excited. And then what often I find is new investors, um, they're frankly all over the map. They, they don't know what part of real estate they want to do because there are many. They don't know where they want to invest. So I have found sometimes people come to real estate, they have a little money in their pocket and they just jump in because it's like, I'm only going to learn if I buy something. And that is, of course, a horrible mistake. Or if they don't have any money yet, they just get lost wasting time and time and time. So I believe the first thing that every new investor should do is to establish a buy box and it must be tight. Uh, for example, a buy box, uh, a good buy box will produce 20 to 40 active listings. No more than that. And the reason it needs to be that tight is you need to be able to look at it for 20 minutes every day. And then the sheer goal of a good buy box after 60 or 90 days, Rick, is you will know what an average deal looks like. If you're writing offers on anything less than 60 days, you're you're gambling. And I don't like that. So yeah, it all comes down to buy box. It all comes down to daily focus. I believe there's only one question that matters, and that is what is an average deal in my buy box? And then I only write great offers. It is really that simple and it's not emotional. Yeah, providing people put the work in. And it's um, you know, looking at the data, and this this is where YouTube really gets screwy because I've I've uh I've kind of developed a little habit where I look at the headline, then I look at the devil in the details. Um, cause I mean, there's one channel out there that, you know, and you know, we both bang on him a little bit, but you know, he yep. shows an example of, of, uh, a liquidation, um, mm -hmm. where landlords are going to be liquidating. And he shows an example of one house, mm -hmm. uh, where they tried to get $2,800 a month in rent and they couldn't because the comps were all 2,200. So he had to drop it by 600. Well, that that's it. Everything's everything's crash. <laughs> so, yeah. I, 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 it's funny you did that. I just did a video that uh, is on that individual. My team is going to edit in a lot of this crash videos. Uh, it's going to take him to task. I literally did that before this started. And here's the deal. The only person that makes money with crash content is the crash creator. I have the numbers right in front of me. It's funny. So this individual called a crash in June of 2021. Yeah. In June of 2021, the median home price was 363 grand and the interest rate was 2.98. Your payment would have been 1527. Again, he called a crash in June of yeah. 2021. <laughs> Just because I'm a geek with data, I look at what's the data today. Well, the median home price is now $447,000. You lost $80,000 in appreciation. Worse yet, Rick, the interest rate is now 5.91 and your payment is $2,654. Your payment is up over a thousand bucks and you lost 80 grand because this individual wants to make money on his viewers, not put good data. Real estate is and has always been a payment based system. I did a 50 year tier use spreadsheet, which is so valuable. I give it away for free, as you know. And 2020 and 2021 were the second and third best year ever to buy a home. The numbers don't lie. It was the best. Of, there's only one year that was better. The affordability. The, it's just calling a crash in 2021 was ridiculous. 
Yeah, and I think I think there's another danger out there too for viewers. And is you know, the, uh, you're an economist. I'm a real estate agent. Um, I don't pretend to be an economist. And I think people want us to tell them where real estate's going to be in two to three years. And I have no idea, and yeah. I'm not going to pretend I know. All what I try to do is say, look, here's what the numbers are today. Here's what this means in the short term. And I'm hoping that people gather this information so that they can make their own decision because they just want to take the lazy approach and go, tell me if it's a good time to buy. Well, I don't know what your financials are. I, just you know. Well, it's, it's even worse than that. Again, um, one, of the, one of the most frequent questions I get, Rick, like you do, not only is it a good time to buy, I get also, is it a good time to buy here? And here is a city or state I've never been to. How yeah, the hell yeah. am I five states away going to know anything about you? And again, this person we're talking about, just because I have the data, he called Austin, Texas, crash in 2021. All right, I'm a geek. I look at the data. Yeah. 536 was the median home price. Interest rate was 3.07. Your payment would have been 2280. Well, today in Austin, Texas, it's 640 grand. You lost 100 grand appreciation. And your payment's now 3,800 bucks. Don't. There is nobody sitting in their mom's basement that can call another city. Every city is their own local. Then your buy box inside the city. You don't know about employment. It's just, it's criminal that people make a lot of money preaching fear and they have no information. They don't know the city from Adam. They don't know the population. It's just, I'll never do it. You're never going to hear me talk. I will talk about two things, Rick. Fresno, California, because I've looked at it for 20 plus years. And I bought and sold hundreds of properties or the nation because I've looked at it for 30 years. I won't talk about L.A. or Austin or Nashville or Phoenix. I will seek other experts. I will ask them a series of questions. But I can't tell you what's going on in Phoenix or what's going on in Vegas. But I got friends and I can ask them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. In fact, we're, we come out with a new show now. We launch on Thursday nights. And I've got two agents that aren't even with uh the brokerage I'm with. And we just, uh, they were following me on YouTube and said, let's bring her on the show. And, and nice. so we, we just kind of quickly show the numbers and then we talk about what we're seeing and the numbers over here. Um, I've always kind of stood on my soapbox and said, look, you can't have a crash with low inventory. You, you just can't. Now you can no. have some adjustments uh, on demand. So like right now, this morning we have 15,000 listings. Okay. And, anyway, and so we hear it's up 160%. And the other thing I like to say is a high percentage of a low number is still a low number. So yeah, we're up 150%, <laughs> yeah. 150 but 15 grand isn't, uh, isn't enough. But here's the really interesting one though, Michael, is we, I track a seven day moving average. Now I, I kind of have to wash some of these numbers out because it, the 4th of July is in there. But yeah. We had 4,293 homes come on the market the past over the past seven days, but only 2,397 contracts. That's a record low. Hmm. And that's what's happening to our market. And, uh, and in 11 weeks, we've gone from an 18-day supply to 47.8. I like it. And yeah, so this, this, is, this is why you've got to go local, right? That's why, I, that's why I'll never talk about Phoenix, right? I read the headlines, but I, I don't know what's going on in Phoenix. I, I have my suspicions uh, because I know what a recession will do to the economy. I can ask intelligent questions, but... Yeah, I mean, that's all great data. That's that's wonderful. Well, it's interesting. I'll show you one quick thing, and I don't want to make this all about Phoenix, but we have 1,686 okay. um, new construction listings that mm -hmm. are on. And, and you know the builders were not putting homes on the multiple no. listings. Why year. would they? Yeah. But they're, I wouldn't either. But they're slapping them out yeah. there now. And uh, and I get text messages, you know. And uh, so it's it's interesting. But here's, here's kind of a telltale thing here. So this lags mm -hmm. about a week. It says our... All of our listings are at 13,000. We're actually at 15,000. So that'll get updated, you know, Saturday. And we'll sure. be above 18 and 19 numbers. But check this out. These are homes between five dollars and $600,000. Uh, Look at that chart. That's the price point that got hammered the most in the interest rate hike. Yeah, so this is really funny. You know, if you watch my channel, I believe the Fed broke housing. Now, that's a bold statement, but I believe it's definitely true. And what do I mean by they broke housing? Well, they have created a generation of first-time buyers that are not going to move. It's financially uh, wrong to move.
right? Historically speaking, in a normal real estate market, which we had for 40 years, you buy your first home, you get married, you have one kid, but when the wife gets pregnant the second time, you move, right? That's typically a five to seven year period. And what's going to happen now is it's not going to be the second kid. It will be the third. We're going to have multiple life events for people to move. Why? Because the Fed gave the gift of lifetime low interest rates, uh, sub 3%. You're not, you're not trading up. Why would you spend an extra 100 grand and double your interest rate? The answer is you're not. You're going to go down to the furniture store and buy a couple of bunk beds and call it a day. You're just not going to move. Yeah, and that that's uh um and it 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 also makes me have the question that says I think and I could be wrong, but because of that, are we going to see a listing ceiling? In other words, listings are going up. Are we going to hit this point where there's just not going to be a lot more listings because people, why are they going to give up that 2.75 rate? You know, I think it's really going to be interesting. If you watch my channel, you know that I believe July 20th is going to be day like an earthquake. Yeah, I've seen I live, that. I, yeah. live, I live in California, so I have earthquakes. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to shake the world and it's going to impact buyers and sellers. And you as a real estate agent, especially somebody who looks at the data weekly, you're about to have 60 days of a lot of noise. What do I mean by that? Yeah. So what I think is going to happen first is buyers are going to see National Association realtors talk about inventory and transactions and all. It's going to be spun in the most negative way possible by every news media because blood sells. So that's yeah. going to scare buyers, right? We've already lost about 18 million buyers who were approved at three mil or three percent that are not approved at six. We're going to lose more. Buyers disappear. Then what's going to happen is you as an agent are going to see a flood of new listings. Why? Because the consumer is so freaking predictable. They're going to see these National Association of Realtors. They're going to look across the kitchen table or bed or wherever they're going to have this conversation go, honey, let's sell. Let's get out at the top. We'll rent somewhere. We'll live with your mom or dad or whatever, and we'll buy back cheaper. But isn't that a good idea? Let's, let's go get all the money now, and we'll buy back when it's cheaper. Lots of people are going to list. Yeah. But and is, you it gonna, are, is it going to be cheaper? No, well, this is, see, this is the, this is, again, these are dominoes that I see clear as day. Yeah. That's going to happen. And then over the course of 30 days, Rick, you're going to get a lot of angry phone calls. You're going to get a lot of angry phone calls as a real estate agent saying, why isn't my house selling? Why don't I have an offer? Blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to have a conversation at day 45 and say, well, do you want to sell or do you need to sell? Because you're going to have what you are undoubtedly going to find 10, 20, 50 percent of this flood of new listings are going to be want to sell. And the want to sells are going to leave. They're going to right. We're going to see a flood. Inventory is going to spike and then it's going to slowly come down because not because of closings, but because of cancellations or expires. When was the last time you saw hundreds, if not thousands of cancellations and expires? It's been years. Oh, well, I, I looked at the numbers and uh, this is interesting. June 30th, we had 150 expired listings on multiple listing service. July 1st, 500. Yeah, see, that kind of trend is going to continue because I believe this July 20th date, which will hit the media the 21st and the 22nd and the 23rd, it's going to scare buyers to hibernate. I'm going to wait six months. We're in a recession. I don't know what's going on. And sellers are going to be like, get me out. Get me all the money. And then you're going to find need versus want. Because if you want to sell and nobody's coming, you're not going to discount. You already got a lifetime low interest rate. You're going to be like, oh, nobody gets it. We missed it. We'll stay put. Then you're going to have some people that need to sell. And it's going to be very interesting because I think there's going to be, there's three markets in real estate. If you're below the median in most of the country and your stuff makes good rental, you're going to sell for a fair price. That move up, which you just showed, which I, that is that market in Phoenix, that five to 600, which I would call the move up market, dead as a doornail. If I was yeah. going to shop for anything, it would be in that market and I would get a monster deal from someone who had to sell. And then there will be luxury. I think luxury will be very hit or miss. Some stuff with the perfect, because in luxury, all you need is one buyer. If you've got that property in that spot for that person, it'll go. But I think luxury gets really soft. I think luxury in Vegas, nothing. Crickets. Uh, a friend of mine, I, I get on every month or so, Brian Lebo, it's like, dude, you're in trouble. 
seven figure homes in Vegas, not good. Uh, in the, in yeah, the, and Vegas always always lags like eighteen months behind the the regular economy. Like so, the economy improves. Vegas isn't going to feel it right away because yeah. people don't go to Vegas until they've saved money to go to Vegas. So that lags about a year and a half. But I think, and I think you're right in that price range where I just saw the inventory spike up, that it's going to be very quiet there. And we're quiet now anyway, because it's, mm -hmm. it's hot as hell. I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to get hotter August. <laughs> well, it's, we, it's interesting. We've people probably don't feel it right now, but we've actually had a mild summer. Um, <laughs> 109 mild. Well, yeah. I mean, Michael, every every year I've been here since 96. The week before okay. the 4th of July is when we we hit consistently between 115 and 118. Oh, wow. Every every year. And what happens is that heat builds up mm -hmm. before the 4th of July, you know, typically. And then that's what brings in the monsoon moisture. So then mm -hmm. the, the, the moisture comes in. We start having the storms. It cools us down a little bit. We didn't see that this year, although we're the monsoons came early. They come in, but we never got that heat spike. But oh. it's still hot, and nobody's going to open houses because gas is five dollars and fifty cents. And guess what? It, school starts in some areas here on July twentieth. Oh, really? Oh, wow! Yeah, really. And so by the second week of August, all the schools are going to be going. So right now, people aren't looking for homes. They're no vacation, they're, they're last minute vacation. Yeah, I got to get San Diego before school starts, and mm -hmm. um, so there's a bit of that. And I, I'm, I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups with real estate agents and you were talking about how real estate agents are going to get yelled at by the sellers. And I had a client that did that too. I mean, oh, he, was convinced, he was convinced that he was going to have 40 people through his house over the weekend. And he'd be looking at multiple offers yeah. on Monday because he was looking at January and February. And no matter what I told him, I, mm -hmm. I'm showing him the stats going, look, it, it is a seller's market, but it's really calmed down. You know, we don't know how this is going to shake out. And he had two people come through the house and he was just oh. livid. My fault. What are you doing to market this? What else are you doing? And I see that in Facebook groups. Agents go, anybody got any ideas on how I can market this house better? Uh, they don't want to reduce the price. Well, yeah, but again, right. I, it's easy for me to say, uh, but real estate agents, your world has changed. Um, yeah. Your job, your job is to qualify that seller before you take the listing. Because what you're, once you sign that contract, you signed up to be yelled at, right? You, oh, that it's your oh. responsibility as a professional to to execute that transaction. So your time to qualify that seller is before you sign. And uh, unlike the last two years where money rained down on fools, take the listing, throw it up for any stupid price, you might get it or more. Uh, the next two years, not the case. Well, that's why I like to talk about a price range. You know, these these brokers that go out and go, give us 15 minutes and we'll give you a price. Yeah, broker price opinion in 15 minutes. That's yeah, what do you mean give you a price? It's their house. I it, I think it's our job to say, look, here's here's where it falls. And it's tricky now because if you're looking at Zillow, that, that historical data doesn't count because <laughs> the closed exactly. sales right now are, are not based on the interest rate hike we had. Yeah, so exactly. Look They're at months old. July comps. Um, so yeah. you got to. But whenever you go in on a listing appointment, they've got that Zillow number right in front of them and they drill it in. That's it's Zillow says, well, OK, so I, I won't market at Zillow prices. In fact, that didn't work out too well for Zillow. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You like losing six hundred million dollars. Go for it. Yeah. Well, speaking of losing money, you guys touched on this. I think it was yesterday when you were talking. Was it Yang? Yeah. Uh, I buyers. Yeah, open yeah. door. Yeah. Open door. Yeah. I heard. And again, you're in the numbers. So. It's really funny when you look at 15,000 listings in Phoenix, right? Because you've got to remember there are two large numbers that kind of skew that. One you've already hit, new home, like new construction. Yeah. 10% of your listings are new construction, which didn't exist a year ago. So if you want, I would back that out to make it apples to apples. You're at 13.5. Then you look at Open Door. And again, I don't know if this is true, but I've read that Open Door's got over 1,000, and I think 1,100. <laughs> that is true. In fact, they have. Uh... They've got 580 that aren't done yet. You know how they remodel them. Mm -hmm. You know they don't really remodel them. They just put in yeah, the they throw paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And and there was one eye buyer here. They didn't even paint all the way up to the ceiling. You could just walk in and oh, and, uh, yeah, so they're, they're gonna go broke. I think I think all eye buyers had their day. I, I, I got to tell you, Rick. If you're a buyer, I mean, forget it. If you're a buyer, if you're a flipper of any size, and you couldn't make money the last two years, I you are a horrible operator. Horrible. Yeah. And I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I know, a, I know a friend, she, 
she got an offer from open door down in her house uh, and they offered her 680,000. I couldn't believe it. And they turned around and sold it for 660. And in November of 2021, things were flying yeah. pretty good then. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, I understand how Zillow did it. They, that, that will be talked about at Harvard business school for years, but, but I've asked the question, what are our are buyers going to shift to a different model because they don't want to be property managers. They have, if you look at their shadow inventory and the number of listings they have now, Michael, they have a 90 or a nine month supply of homes mm -hmm. here in this market. Yeah, so, it, so I think, I think I buyers, I think there's a couple of things that are going to blow up over the next call it eight. Cause I think the next two years are going to be rough. You've heard me say this, Rick. I think we are going to have the largest crash ever in real estate in the next two years. However, it's not in price. It's in transactions. Yeah, we're I feeling think, that already. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we are going to have the largest. And again, people people hear me say transaction. They're like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, bet your ass it matters. You know how much money in part of our GDP is in housing? It's like 15%. And if you whack half that, you could lose 4% of GDP easy. And that's not coming back. So uh, we are going to have a recession. It'll probably be real estate led. Uh, and then the question comes back to the housing market being broken. And you may see some markets, like if you have a market dominated by iBuyers and they decide to give up, that could hurt because that inventory is going to come out and they're going to they're going to fire sell it because they'll take an accounting charge and reserve for bad debt and call it a debt. Yeah, there's no such thing as an expired listing with an iBuyer. They can't, they're not going to hold it. You and I, if we can't sell our home and go, well, I'll just let the contract expire. Mm -hmm. I've been telling people on my channel, pay attention to the iBuyer homes because they're going to have to have a little bit of a fire sale here. So I, I was lucky enough before I left, before I retired, I ran companies, uh, business lines and new products. And I guarantee you at some conference room, some conference table, maybe a Zoom call, uh, this these iBuyers are sitting around. They're going to look at their inventory that's 90 days old or 60 days or whatever. And they're going to say, all right, we've got 1,113 of these homes. Uh, we expected, you know, 2.8 million or whatever it is. We're going to reserve for bad debt, half a million bucks, blow them out. It'll be an accounting charge and it won't even matter, right? It's, they just think different. They're not a normal buyer. At some point, they're just going to take the reserve because they have quarterly numbers and, you know, they can just wash it through their income statement. It's, it's an interesting game, but uh, I think there will be less of them, and I think there will be no I, there will be no I buyers in eighteen months that are doing the same thing they're doing today. They might pivot, they might produce rental portfolios, they might do something. But uh, if you can't make money in the hottest and easiest market, you are going to yeah. do horrible yeah. in a slow market. Well, yeah, you just do. You're going to do horrible if prices just go back to normal of three to five percent appreciation. But Open Door did raise their service fee; it's ten percent now. Yeah, well, it's, they're done. They're, uh, the only question is, the oxygen's turned off. They're gonna, I, my opinion, but <laughs> they're turning blue. <laughs> yeah, they're turning blue, and you can only be blue for so long. Well, it's an interesting market to watch. I know in um, real estate, you know, we we get accused as realtors of manipulating the market and telling people to buy. And I've never sold anybody a house. Mm -hmm. um, I've managed through the transaction, but I've never said, "Here's why you should buy this." Yeah, that's that's your call. Um, and so, I mean, I'll manage you through the sales process too. And I'll tell you if I think you're too high or, you know, and other variables, but, uh, we, I don't have that kind of influence on YouTube. So, I mean, and you don't either, right. I oh, mean, not at all. you know, you can say the market's going to do just great and people are not going to run out and buy a house. Cause Michael Zuber said it's time to, to I buy a house, but, but people enjoy it. You know, YouTube's fun. Um, I decided to do it once March 2020 when they told us to stay home. I yeah. thought I thought real estate was toast. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sitting there going, well, I guess I'll just update people on the numbers because there's nothing else going on. There were no open houses. Yeah, there and, was about uh, a four, maybe five week period where we just thought the world was ending. Yeah. And, uh, then, <laughs> you know, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. Well, Mike, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to me today. I'll let you go because I know you're just super duper busy and let's let's do it again and catch up. And and maybe we can talk after uh, uh, after the NAR comes out with us and see what kind of uh, boots oh, on the ground, uh, feeling that we're going to have here. So I would love that. All right. In the meantime, have a great week. huh? Take care. Thanks again. Thanks, pal.